Hello, and thank you for tuning in to watch this visual presentation on the Mechanical Engineering Department's Wall Climbing Robot Capstone Project. The project team consists of Christopher Melojevic, Breton Fedocek, Jen Moha, Cruz Limbacher, Zephyr Wesbart, and lastly myself, Giovanni Ashton. Each member of this team was responsible for working on a subsystem that would then be combined to form the final project. Christopher was responsible for designing and fabricating the actuation mechanism for the suction cup device. Breton was responsible for developing codes that allowed the Raspberry Pi to communicate with the OpenCM 9.04 microcontroller via serial communication to achieve legged locomotion. Jen was responsible for developing and optimizing code to be used with the striking mechanism and the microelectronic microphone sensor to capture acoustic signal responses with a sampling frequency of approximately 10 kHz. Cruz was responsible for designing two chassis and shaft linking each motor to create the arm for the robot. One chassis served as the housing unit for the electrical circuit and power source while the other houses the equipment needed to conduct the non-destructive tests and control the robot. Zephyr was responsible for developing the electrical schematics and selecting a cost-effective battery that meets the operational requirements for the robot. And I was responsible for developing the real-time web application using a WebSocket communication protocol that enables interaction between any user's web browser and the Raspberry Pi to transfer data. We will expand on these roles in detail as we progress through the video. In this day and age, robots are becoming a viable option to perform numerous amounts of tasks, whether that's cleaning your floors, autonomously driving you to the movies, or even selecting packages on the warehouse floor. Robots have solidified their spots as tools to enhance society. The concept of the wall climbing robot came about in 2018 when I first joined the MKEX Agile and Adaptive Robotics Lab. Dr. Alexander Hunt, the principal investigator of the lab, and I exchanged numerous conversations until we settled on developing a robot capable of climbing a concrete structure. The idea was then introduced to Dr. Thomas Schumacher, who expanded on the idea that the robot should perform non-destructive tests to check the integrity of concrete structures. Currently. Most bridge inspectors perform visual inspections and NDTs on prominent areas of interest. With the use of this robot, inspections would be able to be completed without the need of heavy lifting equipment and this technology would help mitigate the risk of human injuries. With that being said, the goal of the Capstone project was to design and manufacture a legged wall climbing robot capable of traversing vertical smooth surfaces to perform non-destructive tests on concrete structures with a budget of $500. Key customer requirements. The key customer requirements for this robot were, the robot must be legged, it must contain a single board computer, it must utilize an onboard camera, there must be a microphone sensor on board, the robot must be controlled wirelessly, and it must be able to maneuver around different plane surfaces and corners. Due to COVID-19, the performance was assessed on a modular basis. This allowed each user to contribute to the development of the robot while working remotely. The following performance assessments were met for each subsystem or individual component goes as follows. Designing a chassis with torque calculations for arm movement, fabrication of a suction cup assembly with an actuation mechanism, implementation of a code for legged locomotion using the OpenCM904 real-time web application that controls the robot, an electrical circuit layout for wiring the robot, and design and implementation of an apparatus to perform non-destructive tests. One of the biggest challenges that the team faced initially was assigning new tasks to everyone and communication. In order to successfully prevent a reoccurrence of this, the project was divided into subsystems. The first subsystem is the mechanical system. This section consisted of the design that was chosen to satisfy the requirements set out by our customer. Being able to traverse walls, conduct tests safely and accurately, as well as maneuver itself around corners. The intent of this design was to maximize step length while also ensuring every motor has a factor of safety of two. 
Every limb of the robot along with the chassis were intended to be 3D printed. Constrained by the build volume, the chassis were limited in overall surface area. This proved to be a unique challenge of having a list of components and being able to arrange them in a way to have centered moment of inertia while also having an almost 50-50 weight ratio between the two chassis. All limbs including the suction cups were designed to be printed using the Mark Forge Mark II FDM 3D printer using Onyx, while the chassis were to be printed using the Creality CR10 using PLA. Making use of the 3D printers ensure our design would be easily manufactured as well as extremely lightweight. The next subsystem on the list is the electrical system. All the robot's electrical components are powered using a single lithium polymer battery. The LiPo battery are, on average, lightweight, compact, and can output large amounts of current necessary for powering high-performance machines. The HRB4S LiPo battery was selected to power the robot due to its ability to provide up to 198 amps and supply 14.8 volts. The robot has a theoretical average current consumption of 6.2 amps, which allows this robot to have an approximated operational time of 32 minutes. In order to have more possibilities to expand the robot's functionalities for future development, a Raspberry Pi was chosen to be the brains of the entire operation. The Raspberry Pi offers high performance speeds and a built-in Bluetooth and Wi-Fi module. With the use of the Wi-Fi module, an ad hoc network can be made, which would allow multiple devices to transfer data between one another. With the use of this feature, a web application was developed that allowed users, through the use of a web browser, to communicate with the Raspberry Pi. Based on commands being sent to the Raspberry Pi, the device will then send commands via serial communication to the OpenCM which controls the Dynamixels for legged locomotion, or the Arduino DUI, which is in charge of performing NDTs and data acquisition. With the use of the OpenCM 9.04 microcontroller, Dynamixel servo motors were used to perform the legged locomotion. As our legs are used to move us from place to place, our robot can accomplish the same task through the use of inverse kinematics. Inverse kinematics play a great deal in identifying the position of each servo, which is then translated into movement. In order to walk predetermined distances for the walk path, three different positions were used. A home position, an extended position, and an arcing position. While in the extended position, the robot is able to rotate around the end fixed to the concrete allowing the other end to overcome changes in elevation or attach to another plane. In order to adhere the robot to the wall, an actuated suction cup mechanism was used. Upon making contact with the vertical surface, the suction cup system begins actuation. This is accomplished by powering up a small DC motor utilizing a 2000 to 1 gear ratio to rotate a cam. A cam system typically has three main parts a uniquely shaped cam, a follower, and a spring. The cam has an exponentially decreasing slope rising to 13 millimeters, which is proven through testing to be the optimal draw length for the longest attachment period. When the apex of the cam is reached, there is a flat surface perpendicular to the axis of rotation. This allows the system to achieve self-locking which prevents the motor from being unloaded when fully actuated, thus resulting in low power consumption. This system cleverly utilizes the suction cup's pad as the spring for the system. This helps reduce weight of the system, ensuring that the cam and follower stays in contact. The choice of a simple DC motor was made along the same vein to ensure weight is minimized. This resulted in a need to incorporate a hall sensor in the follower, sensing when a magnet is close. With the incorporation of a magnet at the apex of the cam, the system will know when it reaches peak actuation. Once the robot is stationary, the user can initiate an impact echo test through the use of the web application. 
There are many forms of non-destructive tests that can be used to identify voids and measure cracks within concrete structures. The technique used in our design is an impact echo test and just as the name suggests, it's done by inducing an impact onto the surface of the test subject. The impact generates an acoustic frequency detected by the audio sensor. The data is then recorded using a data acquisition system, which in this design is an SD module used in conjunction with the Arduino DUE. By performing an FFT analysis on this data, it can provide key information about the location and size of cracks or voids present in the concrete structure. The final design was 3D printed with two chassis joined by one arm made up of three joints. Each chassis housed three suction cups with individual cam and follower actuators. This current design of the robot used five Dynamixel MX64 servo motors, which are used to achieve legged locomotion, and six DC motors located on each actuator. The DC motors are used to drive the cam which produce a linear displacement that causes the flexible pad to deform and produce a lower internal pressure that allows the robot to adhere to smooth surfaces. A separate linear actuator capable of inducing an 11 pound impact force was mounted on the chassis to perform impact echo NDTs. Through the use of the wireless network produced by the Raspberry Pi, users are able to command the robot to walk and perform NDTs via serial communication between the Raspberry Pi, Arduino DUE, and OpenCM 9.04. Lastly, all these components are powered directly from a 14.8 volt lithium polymer battery mounted on the robot for a completely wireless experience. When we first began our journey with Dr. Hunt, he stated that he was looking for a robot that must be legged, controlled by a single board computer. There must be an onboard camera for vision, the robot should not have pneumatic components. It must be controlled wirelessly, maneuver around corners, and be able to detect cracks. I am proud to say that we have met all but one requirement, and that is the ability to take corners. Due to COVID-19, our final design's performance was measured by the performance of our modular components of the robot. The entire mechanical system was designed and 3D printed to test for functionality. The suction cup's actuation mechanism was fully electromechanical. Remote users can access the robot through its network and send commands to walk and provide vision to the users. Remote users can access the robot through its wireless network and send commands to walk and provide vision for the user to see in front of the robot. NDTs can be performed and we have an electrical schematic for wiring the entire robot. To summarize everything that was previously discussed, the team was responsible for developing a legged wall climbing robot capable of traversing vertical smooth surfaces to perform non-destructive tests on concrete structures. And we have, in theory, met that goal. We have all the components once assembled to make a fully functioning wall climbing robot that is capable of being controlled wirelessly to climb smooth vertical concrete surfaces and tests for crack propagation. To current and future teams that work on a project, be mindful that when working on a project, make sure to budget appropriate time to account for difficulties and setbacks. Meeting a milestone to progress in the development of a project requires trial and error, time, and a lot of effort. Understanding your teammates, their personalities, and work habits are huge keys to success, for this will help dividing and conquering tasks more manageable. When working on a team, you must be willing to step up and take more responsibilities if nobody makes the initiative. Consult with your advisor to get their opinion on difficult segments of the project because they are a valuable resource and should not be overlooked. Feature recommendations for this project consist of optimizing the code for the robot, adding a thermal camera, improving the load bearing capacity of the suction cups, and improving the power efficiency of the robot. Thank you all for watching and have a great day.